I want to see your joy. Come on, somebody. I want to see your joy. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have to praise. Praise the Lord, somebody. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I feel like I want to pray again. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Are we excited to be in church today? Thank you, Lord. I just want to pray for everybody before we begin the service. Just lift your hands wherever you are. And not only lift up your hands, make sure your hearts are lifted up as well. Hallelujah. Make sure your hearts are lifted up. Glory be to God. Amen. God and King. Father, we want to praise your most holy name. I want to thank you for every life praise. And Father, even as we come together in your name. We know that we are in Mount Zion and we are here with a company of angels, with the general assembly of all the saints. We know that your Holy Spirit is here and I thank you for every life present here today in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord God Almighty, I pray that no, no, no one of them, even those that are not here today, 
that are member of this ministry, the belief in the vision, the belief in what God has called us to do in this ministry. I pray that none of them will go back the same way they came. Amen. I pray that their lives will be transformed. Amen. So that, that Father, they are becoming limit breakers in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Beyond the limitations of the mind, the limitations Amen. of the nations, the limitations yes, of their situations, the limitations yes, of their health, the limitations yes, of their finances, yes, the limitations yes, of their culture in the name of yes, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh Lord, Amen. that whatever yes. has been limiting them, as from today hence for that limitations be broken in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Properties in heavenly places, powers of darkness today by the name of the Lord. Those powers have been bind in the name of jesus and i want to bind bound in heaven as i bind it here is bound in heaven in the name of jesus and today, today in the name of jesus your life is in a new dimension your life i said your life is taking a new dimension i don't know if you did it in your spirit the holy ghost will confirm this word in your spirit if there is just one man in your family you're going to be that person Amen. If there, if there's no, there's never been a PhD holder in your family. I said you're going to be that PhD holder. If there's never been a first degree or a second degree, which is a postgraduate degree, in your family, you're going to be that holder. Amen. There's never been a billionaire in your family. You're going to be that holder. Amen. Amen. The scripture says it. I'm going to be bringing scriptures to you to prove to you that you can do it. I know your mind is telling you right now. I've not got even one pound in my account. But by yeah. the grace of God and by the power of the Holy Ghost, yeah, and the unction that I am in this place today, you are going beyond that. You are going beyond that limit. In the name of the Lord, the power of God that causes men to break limits, to break records, I release it upon you here today in the name of Jesus. Amen. I release. It. <laughs> I release it upon you here today in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's a new dawn. Amen. I say it's a new dawn in the name of Jesus. Amen. I remember Amen. I told my Linda that she was going to buy a car. And I saw her in the vision. Amen. She was telling me, oh, she, she said to me, how do I never know how to drive a car? How will I own a car? That limitation of your mind is rebuked in the name of Jesus. Amen. You're going beyond, you're going above, you're unstoppable in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Begin to pray. Tell yourself, say, I am a limit breaker in the name of Jesus. Amen. I am a limit breaker. Amen. I am doing like no one has done. Amen. It's gonna be me. I am the first prophetess in my family, and you can be that man as well. You can be that woman as well. You can be that Elijah. You can be that person. You can be that evangelist. You can be that first man. You can be that first woman. That pick up your Bible and say, you know what? I'm gonna be that evangelist. I'm gonna go out and minister the gospel of Christ. You're gonna be that man. Your <laughs> Because God said it, yes, you can. Amen. Not because you think you can. Not because of your ability. Not because of where you come from. Oh, some of you might be saying, you know, my dad was a president. You're not doing it because your dad is a president. You are doing it because King Jesus is your dad. Hallelujah. And, he's the and the word of God said, that same, that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is alive in you. Oh, yes. I mean, I mean a man like you and I, he raised Christ from the dead. That's it. That's what you can do. 
You can go beyond the grave. You can go beyond the car. You are skyrocketing in the name of Jesus. I thank you for their lives and I thank you for their faith. That because the belief is a result of their believing in you, their faith. This is happening in the name of Jesus Christ. Before Amen. this year, before this year any, some of you will shock me in this ministry. Amen. Some of you will shock me. And this I'm going to say, you're going to shock me in this ministry. And because Amen. I am God and I'm talking to you. You will shock me. You will shock me. And I will be thinking, did this happen in period or it was in another ministry? Yeah, but it's gonna happen. Some of you will shock me before December, before December 2023, even before my birthday. Some of you will shock me. And I give it to you as a prophetic word. Hallelujah. Take all your glory, Lord. Take all your honor, Lord, for that which you are doing in our life. What I have seen, they will see it in your life. What ears haven't heard will be heard in your life. Something significant, something that hasn't happened, it will happen in your life. Before this year, in the name of Jesus. America. Yeah, I don't know who I, I think I'm talking to myself. Oh my god, it's like you can't hear me. I cannot feel your dream. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Amen. 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 I feel the power of God. Thank you, Lord. All right, all right, all right, all right. Can, can you just make a joyful noise onto the Lord? Hallelujah. I can't say to your wife from the bench. I can say to your woman of God. I know you love me so much. If I say you all over the place, I said to King Jesus. I said to King Jesus. I said to King Jesus. I can see the leaders in your account. I can see the anointing on your life. I can see the leaders. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. It is happening. Take it from my mouth to you. That is a prophetic Take it from my mouth, your ears, and to your heart and to your spirit. Every unction, every tendon to your bloodstream. Hear me. I said, take it. That is a prophetic word. If you cannot hear your spirit, I've heard it anyway. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I can feel your joy. I'm so excited to be here today. I can, I can feel your joy. It's like my, it's like. I just as my belly is bubbling up like like a little baby, oh, <laughs> like a little baby. Thank you, Father. We love our Amen. daddy. We love you, daddy. Yes, our Lord. daddy, daddy of Pirish Embassy. We love him, and he yes, knows Lord. from the depth of our hearts. Our daddy knows we do. We love you, dad. And that all your glory and your honor in this place today, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't know. I'm feeling, you know, I don't I cannot explain how I'm feeling on the inside of me. Amen. <laughs> just laugh, just laugh. Hallelujah. And may you laugh better than I can laugh. May your laughter be better than mine. I said, may your laughter be better than mine. I know I'm going to be better than mine. Amen. Amen. There is something that makes me come into your presence. My helper. There is nothing that makes me come into your presence. My helper. 
There is something that made me come into your presence. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I see Elijah. Hallelujah. I see see the prophet Elijah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes, the glory of God is so mighty in this place. Thank you. Thank you. As I'm talking to you, I see three lives being transformed. Three people, three. Yes. And it's like that's the auction that was upon the life of Elijah is coming upon them to be like that. So it's like what's Elijah? I you receive that grace in the name of Jesus Christ. May you receive that grace in the name of Jesus Christ. May you receive that grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Amen about something very very important i know on your some of your minds you're already thinking you know what mom is coming to break the limit of course i have broken it already just for the fact that you're here as a man thinking isn't it just for the fact that it is broken already but i'm going to tell you very, very significant things that you need to let go so you can manifest this grace that has come upon your life here today. Hallelujah. Amen. And you need to take this very serious. Hallelujah. Amen. You need Amen. to take it very serious. Because so many people are facing a lot of limitations. Mm. Financial limitations, cultural limitations, uh, religion, um, uh, uh, career, business marital ministerial we have a lot of limitations that so many people are actually facing and you know if i wait to actually say you know what i want to talk to people and i want to really ask them what their problem is in 10 people i'm sure eight will be asking me you know what woman of god what can i do to go beyond these limitations some of you have spiritual mm. limitations some are like you know what i don't grow spiritually no matter what i do this thing is not just happening i'm not day i don't know what the problem is there are so many different kinds of limitations that god's people face but you know what the good news is that you can actually 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 go beyond these limitations Amen. you can limitations you can yeah. break the limit. someone has said this is the limit yes, in my Lord. family I tell you, in this family every year someone dies i remember sometime few, i think sometime last week i did tell you guys right i was praying and the lord told me ella pray and break the line of death and delay in your family because it's like every year or every two years someone had to die in my family but you know what I prayed and I said it ends. It's not gonna happen anymore. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm sure I would have broken the limit long time ago. I would have lost my mom. But I've said no one is dying in my family anymore. Unless Amen. I say Amen. Hallelujah. I'll be the one to be there. Oh, this one, you're too diabolic. Die now. Not nobody is dying in my family anymore. Mm-hmm. No one is going to experience delay in my family anymore because I am the limit breaker. And this morning, guess what? The Lord kept echoing to me. He said, I'll tell them 
Tell them they are limit breakers. He said, tell them Amen. their limitations has been broken. Amen. I'm not saying it to me. Yeah. It different times. Hallelujah. You are a limit yeah. breaker. Tell them. He said, tell them. Tell my people oh, that oh, the limit has been broken. That they are limit breakers. The limit has been broken. The boundary mm. has been broken. I wrote it down in my diary. Just that it's, it's not downstairs. Man. So I'm not coming to minister to you because God is not aware. Our daddy knows, and he told me to tell you that he has broken the limit already. Hallelujah. So you, you're not here because it is a coincidence. You're here because you're that limit breaker. Or maybe you're saying nobody in my family has never has never had a car before, like driven a car before. But I have the good news I've come to tell you is so you're that person. Amen. Yes, Amen. Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Amen. Remember my mother, I honor you so much. Dad, Dad said something. He said his mom prayed when they told the mom. I mean, the mom never had a womb to carry a baby anymore because she didn't want to have children. I think she hadn't. And, you know, she had to go to the hospital to do this so she can't have kids anymore. And literally, she was told, you can't have kids anymore because you have done this like that. But she said she prayed. I said, ah, there's something is happening here. None of my children is a prophet. God, you're going to give me a prophet. Mm. Yeah, I want a prophet, and behold, she became pregnant of that baby, and it became prophet over angel. Yeah, I don't know what you've been telling Glory. God, but you know, is God. Okay, you are not only your language. If there's no, be, if there's never been anyone in your family that has done this thing. You're gonna do it. Amen. You Amen. are God. Amen. Oh, you're saying nobody in my family has thank God in my family. So many people are beautiful. I was the second. Nobody they have today. There, you will be the first person because you are here. Nobody Amen. in my family has ever got beyond yeah, the limit yeah, yeah. of people yeah, yeah, You yeah, will be yeah. that first person. Lord. There's never been a prophet Amen. in your family. Yeah. You're going to be a prophet. Because as for me and my Amen. children and my household, we are very precise and wonders. I'm Amen. not going to be the first prophet in. I'm the first prophet for my family, but oh, all my sure children are going to be prophets. Yeah. Not one of Amen. my generation is going to go yes, without prophesying. It's going to go without yes, serving God. Lord. Maybe there's never been an evangelist. Tell yourself, you know what? If I cannot be, I'm going to have a child that's going to be. You are breaking that limit in oh, one way or the other. I don't okay. need to know how you're going to do it, but I'm speaking to you that you're going to do it. Yes, only one in my family has ever done this. There's, you know, your family, you know, don't you? I'm breaking it. Oh, you want me to profess about your family to you? Yes, no, yeah, yeah, I know that. I'll do yeah. that in a minute. <laughs> See, the love yes. prophets, they're like, Yes, yes, you know your family better than I do, don't you? <laughs> yes, mother. Oh, you know yes, that yes. limit in your family that no one has ever crossed. You know that thing that no one has oh, yes. been able to do it. But I've come to speak to you here today that by the end of this session today, like this, this sermon, this church service today, because God, yeah, because God said so, because Jesus said so, you're going to do it. You're going to do it. Lord. No one has ever said you're going to be the first. As a matter of fact, Amen. I know who to be the first in my country. In fact, to do, not only from my family, in my country. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 All right. Some things yeah, that we need, I'm going to be very quick. It's a very, very short set of hours, isn't it? You know our short, isn't it, Pastor Sandra? Please, Sandra. Hey, when I say it's a very short service, you know our, how short our service is like four, four hours. Yeah, like it's that. very short, very no, short. <laughs> it's like promise you, it's not going to be up to four hours. I'm joking. All right. The first thing you need to let go, one thing that brings limitation in God's people's life, in our lives, is sin. Whenever you live in sin, you've already placed a limitation. You've already placed a boundary. That was why Jesus, I'm not going to dwell so much into this because we know you all here are born again, unless there's someone that is watching that is not a born again, that you want me to talk to you or to lead you to Christ, which I yeah. really do. Sin places a lot of. Is that anyone that is okay? Did somebody? Okay. Wow. Wow. Okay. Is there anybody here that is not a born again? Is there anybody here that is not? 
nobody all right the first thing we should know is that sin places a lot of limitations we all know what happened to adam and eve if i take you back to the book of genesis which yeah. we all know the story the moment adam seen there was a limitation that not god placed, but because of that sin that limitation i've told you about parameters already and because of that sin there was a limitation that immediately was placed upon him and his wife and he started even noticing that he was naked he could not do some things he was now running away from god they got he used to come and say hello daddy we, i love you he couldn't he started running away that's what sin does hallelujah amen, amen. that's what sin does and brought so much into that that was why jesus christ came to restore us to break that limitations isn't it he came amen, to give us amen. the Holy spirit that when we have him hallelujah we know that amen. we can go beyond and we thank god the holy spirit there's no one here without the holy spirit glory be to god the second thing that limitation hallelujah in our lives is ignorance Isaiah 4 6 and my people perish because of lack of knowledge hallelujah when you are truly Amen. not aware of who you are, of the man and or the woman that God has created you to be, of what God has placed you here to do, you find yourself working in limitations because you you definitely are, you're doing something that you're not called to do. And when you're doing what you're not called to do, you would be faced with a lot of limitations. In doing what you're called to do, you're going to be faced with challenges, but not limitations. To me, limitations does not exist when you're working in purpose, but challenges do exist. Limitations exist when you're not working in purpose. But once you find yourself in purpose, what you will face is challenges. That's fine. I'll deal with that by the grace of God. Another thing that places limitation upon the lives of people is laziness. He become a Proverbs 10, 4 says he become a poor that dealer with a slack hand but the hand of the diligent make it rich some people are very lazy okay we know that very lazy you don't you know you just want to sit and eat you don't want to put that effort in doing nothing you don't want to put that effort in going to work you don't want to put that fasting some love their food so very much mm. that's that's another form of laziness because you only want to sit and eat you don't want anything that would make you a little bit uncomfortable from your comfort zone we need to be able to break go out of the the, the comfort zone you know sometimes even with the, the anointing like when the lord told me ella i have sent you you have to go if i do not come out to do it i would have broken the limitation i would have gone beyond the bound. i had to go out i didn't have to say oh now i will wait until god will just cross like jonah like this and swallow me and skin me up on Facebook. After all, Facebook, <laughs> Facebook is 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 is, 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 a, is, a, is an intangible location. It's not even a tangible location that you can say, "Oh, he, he, God will speak me up on Facebook and I'll just." You can't. So I had to carry myself that. Hallelujah! I had to carry myself that. That's way that you know you can go out of. You can break limitation. But one thing I'm just pointing. The, the point is that limit our lives hallelujah another yeah, one is no yeah. another one is no purpose or misplaced priority so many people you know you know there is the i, I, I i've ministered about the whatever anointing the whatever anointing so many yeah. people first talk in that place of you know i'm not i don't know who i am i don't know what god has called me to do and i told you you know what you can start with the whatever anointing there is always that something in you that tells you that you know what you can do this you have to do this you can do this and that always ring a little bell in our mind you know what probably this is what god has called me to do and why don't i venture into it whenever you venture you said your hand away and if you venture into that thing and it, it happens to be that it is not the right one. One thing I always know that God does is He redirects you, or, or He brings Amen. you back to which is the right Amen. one. There is no perfect person, or there is no perfect way of studying a thing or doing a thing. But we have the Spirit of God that leads and teaches us. Hallelujah! Some Amen. people have this. You are at the verge. I was talking to one of my daughters. You know, I wasn't really uh she's here today i'm not going to mention her name i wasn't really impressed about something that i intended to do for her but you know you cannot be wanting a lamborghini when you cannot even afford for for that lamborghini 
You cannot even afford mm-hmm. petrol. You cannot even afford gas for that Lamborghini. You cannot even maintain that car. I remember I have a friend here. He has a Range Rover. So, <laughs> so you know, one day now I had to foil the car. So I'm like, let me foil the car. So I'm like, no, just put four for about 15 pounds. He's like, this 15 pounds will even do nothing. I said, no, in the UK, when we fall, when I fall, when we foil the car, 15 pounds is enough to foil the car. He's like, you know, this is a Range Rover. A Range Rover is different. But... <laughs> Hallelujah. So he was like, this is a Range no. Rover. A Range Rover is different from this, like that. So he started telling me, I didn't even know, honestly. So it's like the tank of a Range Rover. I asked, I said, how big is the tank or something like that? I, told him, I think he said two liters or something. But he's like, the problem is, is the car. It's a big car. And let me tell you, he said, like, I was like, okay, now 35 pounds. He said, even this 35 pounds will not do nothing. I said, it's none of my business. 35 pounds in there. This is money to put full tank in in UK, in my car, in there in UK. What are you talking about? Come on. <laughs> so he was like, it's Range Rover. He said, okay, friend. <clears throat> so one day they were doing comparison, like, oh, you hit my car or hit yours. He said, okay, you, I can hit your car <clears throat> and the cost of repairing your car might just be a hundred pounds. But do you know hitting my car, just one spare part, one part of my car, the price of your car. <laughs> so <laughs> you cannot be wanting a Range Rover when you cannot even afford a Toyota Yaris. You cannot even afford a Vauxhall you cannot even afford the Corsa. You cannot even afford the Mercedes. Wow, you want to go to misplaced priorities will place limitations in your life. It will place a lot of limitations. If you, where your eyes not off, so we don't have to go there anymore. Misplaced priorities will place limitations. You know very well that you have to pay your school fees, but you know that that Air Force, that Nike, you know. Oh, that Jordan, you know, we love it, isn't it? <laughs> it's JD Jordan's like that. You know, that Air Force, oh, it's so nice. You say, ah, if I wear this one, there's this barbecue coming up. By the time I land there, with this one, I'll be the lady of the show, I'll be the man of the day. But you know, that please, I've said, if where your eyes noise, I don't want to repeat myself, mute yourself. And you're like, you know what? Let me just use part of my school fees like this and get this my Air Force. You know, especially especially the Jordan one, Nike Jordan. Hey. Then then you're forgetting that you have to pay your school fees. Then you go about start praying. Father, help me. There is this limitation. I cannot pay my school fees. Misplaced priorities. You need to know who you are, know what you can afford. Do you know I can? And now I can have any iPhone that I want, but I can use, let me say, I can use any iPhone that, that I want because I can afford it. There is no point for me going to get an iPhone 14 or the 15 that is coming, or which I'm getting it definitely because I like to try adventure. Sometimes I just try, like to see what is like, then I give it back, I, you know, because I just want to see what it's like. What? But if I'm going for it, it's because I can afford it. Yes, I don't have to go for an iphone 15 or iphone 14 pro max when i cannot even and let me tell you to even maintain an iphone is very costly as in data i have a friend back in my county cameroon he was like even if you give me an iphone i won't take it i mean this was this is a man come on he's like i won't take it because the data is too costful i have my sister i bought an iphone for her if she was here Sometimes I tell her, do not ask you to get an iPhone. I bought an iPhone for her, but I'm finding the phone. She'll be like, I like, I not talk on video call because it's going to finish my data. I'm like, really? So me, I want to see you now. I should not see you because you're kind of data. So I end up now foiling the phone for her. Top it, doing top up, top up for her. Because I'm like, no, let me, I ask her, do you want a Samsung or an iPhone? iPhone, just so when it rings, hey, everybody, no. Of an iPhone. Now you can never even put data in the phone. You're troubling my head. I even told her, give send an iPhone or send you I'm Samsung. No way. It's the iPhone. <laughs> Miss priority. Miss, you cannot even afford data. You want an iPhone. Hey. <laughs> These are things that place limitations because now you'll be thinking, you'll be praying for for God to give you data on your phone. And when God does not give you, say, God is wicked. He did not answer my prayer. No. I told you one time last year, I was doing a lot of things and he needed a lot of money. So the Lord told me, he gave me a scripture to go and read. 
Like, Ella, you'll not be able to afford all these things you've started at a go and you're doing. I ignored it though. I was like, ah, God will provide. I had to go like this. Eh? No. I afford to do extra work and extra work to get extra money. Even as I was doing the extra work to get extra money, I was super Father, please help me now. I'm sorry, forgive me now. I mean, this is not some kind of small money that you'll be saying you'll just pick it up. This is money that will be ranging about $5,000 upwards to be able to. But God won't me. But I do not know that a circumstance will happen that I'll have to use money as with my mom and I will not be able to afford it. But the Lord saw it that so an unforeseen circumstance is going to happen that this budgeting you've budgeted you're going to have to use it for this thing and you're not going to be able to afford to you know to afford for all of this that you're doing but by the grace of god all is well hallelujah but let me tell you, you don't want to place yourself there this is what causes women for money and men for dating sugar mom because when i talk i don't talk about men men nothing <laughs> we don't do this thing you do it too See the way man is sad like it's only been my dad do this. <laughs> Let me tell you, man, you do it as well. You start going out to dead rich girls to look for girls like Ella because you want to collect money from them. You will not see one from like this. We are spirit led. The Holy Spirit will tell us that you want to eat our money, we'll not give you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't you know there are men that will they'll go now and start lying, especially this in my gas had gone this, my toe, I just broke my knee like this, like that. The doctor said we have to go for surgery. Hey, mm. why is priorities? If you want to live a life you cannot afford, you want to afford a lifestyle that is not for you. This place is limitation in your life. So you have to, hallelujah. Another one is yeah. imitation. Imitation. See, hear what I tell you. I always tell you, okay, I love you so very much. If you can, you, you will be a better person tomorrow. Because I don't just say this to you, I do it with myself as well. I do it with myself, all right? Psalms 139, verse 13 to 14 says, For thou hast possessed my reins. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul know it right well. The scripture says, You're wonderfully and fearfully made. Why want to be like another person? Mom, please come again with us, Psalms. Psalms 139. Please don't unmute yourself to speak when I'm ministering. You can just put it there in the comment section. Instead, just type in the comment section. Don't unmute yourself to speak unless you're interacting with the session, but not popping up with a question. Psalms 139, verse 13 to 14. If somebody can help us to just be put in the scripture, then you know they, can, they might want to go back later and you know refer to the scripture. 139, Psalms 139, 13 to 14 says, For thou hast possessed my rings thou hast covered me in my mother's womb i will praise thee for i am fearfully and wonderfully made marvelous are their works and that my soul know it right well for i am fearfully and wonderfully made the scripture says you are fearfully and wonderfully made you are not thinking oh no my books is not enough you know my butt is not enough i need to add some like this then reduce like that my lips is not okay I need the lips like that, like that. But the scripture says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. When you just begin to change that thing like that, you're no longer fearfully and wonderfully That's made. when you place limitations in your life. And because of what imitation? Oh, you know, you know Kim Kardashian. I want to be like him. You're not Kim, sweetheart. Oh, you know, Cristiano, you know, when I used to be in Africa, don't mind me, I have all these silly stories to tell you. We used to watch, you know, Cristiano Ronaldo advertise this head shampoo, head shampoo, which is head and shoulders. I think the boy, the men, is, is for men mostly. It's head and, is, this, is it called head and shoulders shampoo? Yes, ma'am. What shampoo do men in, uh, Emmanuel, don't you use shampoo or you don't use head and shoulders? It's head so and when we watch it, all right? And we used to watch that advert. I'll be like, wow, so if I wash, just buy that shampoo like that, wash my hair, my hair will be like crystal. <laughs> I do not know that their hair was different from ours, literally. <laughs> so I was like, wow. 
I just need to buy this shampoo, wash my hair, and my hair will be slick. Like, just do slick with my hair like this. I was not the only one who were fascinating about it. We didn't know that literally he has gone to even do some other styles on the hair, do styling and, you know, do use bubbles and straighteners on the hair and all of this to look that slick. They'll be like his head and shoulders. Ah, ah, advert, advert so you see imitation i was like ah, let me go quickly I imitate so i got but i've washed my hair yeah it's for it's for men but i had to buy it to wash my hair so to to see my hair will be like cristiano ronaldo's own <laughs> unfortunately my hair is still there with kinky curly kinky hair like this very afro like <laughs> may god help us <laughs> imitation we like to imitate people a lot i always tell you people i said our ministry is a very unique ministry we don't mm -hmm. we are not copycat we don't do copy and paste when we run with we we take from the spirit whatever you mm -hmm. see me doing the lord told me about it so we are our own people because we are unique and QH embassy is unique it's a unique ministry it has its roots from heaven we are not copy we are not copycats hallelujah and i don't expect any Amen. of you to be copycat because imitation places limitation upon your life. Say it again, imitation leads to limitation. <laughs> limitations, imitation leads to limitations. And when you take away the L from the limitations, it becomes imitation, isn't it? Praise the Lord, somebody. So tell yourself, I am wonderfully and fearfully made. There is no other one like me. In in fact, if you care, you say you are beautiful, you are richer than me, but who, who I am, you can be on no one quarter to it like that. Because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come on. I hope I'm blessing someone today. Are we in yes, church? I feel, I, I feel like I'm in that, you know, this. Ma, you are in the church. church. You want to put that loudspeaker like that and just be shouting like this and nothing is coming up. We are in church. I feel like I'm there. We are in church. In church, I'm Okay. I thought we are in dump embassy because the way some people are. I cannot hear what you're saying, Prophet. Oh, you want to do imitation? That's why you're quiet. No, 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 no. Praise the Lord. All right. Another thing that places limitation upon the lives of God's people. Boys curses let's look at leviticus chapter 5 leviticus chapter 5 verse 17 says and if a soul sin and commit any of these things which are forbidden to be done by the commandment of the lord though he wist it not yet is he guilty and shall bear his iniquity though he wist it not yet is he guilty and shall bear his iniquity the scripture says if you don't any of these things i forbid you from doing you bear upon yourself a curse but we thank god jesus is a curse breaker he has broken every curse upon our lives but there are things that you can do that can attract a curse upon your life as well apart from people hallelujah apart yeah. Apart from P or J or this, I don't believe in saying every, anybody cursed me has anything to do upon me. No. And I will tell you why. But there are things you can do to attract limitation curses upon your life. And the book of Jeremiah chapter 6 verse, Hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon these people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law, but rejected it. Do you see that? Am I in pure embassy? Yes. yes Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. 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 He says, Hear, O yes. earth, behold, I will bring evil upon these people. The Lord said, Even the fruit of their thoughts, even your thoughts is cursed already, because you have not hearkened unto the word of the Lord. You see, this when you live in disobedience to God, you invite curses upon your life. I remember one day I told you guys this. You see, yesterday morning, I made the post of which we were praying, and I said, a woman without God is no woman. It wasn't mine. It was the Lord that told me. He said, a woman, God is no woman at all. And one day, the Lord told me, Ella, when you don't pray, you limit some things upon your life. When you don't pray, automatically, you've placed limitations upon you. So there are so many things that people do ignorantly, hallelujah. 
that Amen. invite curses upon their lives. So don't, because you know, you know, I, you know, I'm not a religious person, and I have a problem with religion so very much, especially with people that pray a lot, because there are people that pray that they need to act and they are not acting. You pray at all times, but be in action as well. Faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. Apostle James said it. Hallelujah. No matter Amen. how much you pray. Imagine if God told me, oh, Ella, I called you, go to Facebook, and I said, okay, daddy, I need to fast and pray. One day, if I tell you to do something, don't even think of fasting or praying. He said, don't dare it. Go and do it immediately. <laughs> He said, that's what causes you not to do everything I've told you to do because some you say, okay, let me first and pray again to make sure it's the Lord that spoke. You place a limit. Immediately you've placed a limitation. No matter how much you pray, if you can't pray from now to tomorrow, anything will change in your life. I promise you that. Fast and pray, don't go to school. Fast and pray, don't go to work. Fast and pray, don't 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 pick up that business don't and say ah, i'm just you know god will just one day like that i believe it i've seen in the bible how angel michael just appeared yeah like that for angel michael god is saying you're more than angel michael right now here and here you're greater than John we are Amen. no longer Amen. the expansion of the old testament Amen. we are no longer in the old testament Amen. we are the new testament we are the new creation we think Amen. different we act different now we are God on the earth. We are God's yes. now. God is not coming from nowhere to come and do anything. That's why that your fasting and prayer, not nothing has changed because you're fasting and praying and doing nothing. <laughs> you're fasting and praying and waiting for God to do the work for you, but it's like it's in your hands now. The finished works of Jesus Christ is in your hands to be done. Hallelujah. All right. Amen. Thank you. Okay, let's go. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Now, I've given you a few points of just those. Those are just a few. We know so very much. We know there are others, but I don't want to take all of your time. We even know that your thoughts, your mind, limit you because Proverbs says, "As a man thinketh, so is he." Mm -hmm. So when you think of, "I cannot do this," one day the Lord told me, "Ella, whenever you say I cannot do this, you're saying God cannot do." This and he called it. There was a name he called it. I forgot him. So whenever you're saying, you know what, I cannot do this. This thing cannot be done. You've said God cannot do this thing. You've rendered God important. Hallelujah. Amen. Are we there? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yes, so I'm going to tell you now how you can break limits. And trust me, I'm not going to tell you to only tell you go and fast and pray. No. Because I know that's what your pastors will tell you. you know, just fast like this and pray, then sow this seed. By the time you wake up tomorrow, <laughs> hey, everything will be done. <laughs> and Jamaica will just appear from heaven and do that work for you. <laughs> Glory be to God. Then by the time you wake up tomorrow, yeah, nothing yeah. And you not lie to this prophet. Like, they do not lie. You're just like them. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay. The first, the first pointer, the first pointer that I'm gonna tell you on how to break limits is have faith. Have faith in God. Hebrews chapter 11. Let's go to the book of Hebrews chapter 11. We are gonna quickly read and we get this Bible. We are going to quickly read. I want to show you something very, very important that you need to know and you need to have to break limits first is you need to have faith you need to have faith in god hebrews i want to open that scripture from here hebrews 11 let's read from verse verse one it says now faith is the substance of things hoped for i'm reading from the end now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen for it is, I'm not teaching you about faith, but this is just a point I'm reading to you. So just get to where I want you to catch it, you'll catch it eventually. For it is, it says, for it is, for by it the elders obtain a good testimony. Did you see that? Let me yeah, read it again. I'm sure you missed it. You missed it, yes. The way some of you are looking at me is like, you don't know what I'm talking 
Kenapa? <laughs> Praise God. Now, oh, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtain a good testimony. Mom, how can I break limits? Prophetess, how can I break limits? How can I obtain a good testimony? Faith. Did you see that? Amen. Faith. Amen. For by it the elders obtain money. They broke records, isn't it? Yes. They went beyond it by faith. So faith is the first thing you need. All right. Yes, mother. Amen. Let's go ahead. Verse 3 says, By faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of this visible. Amen. By faith Amen. we understand that the walls, this wall that we are, it was framed by the word of God. But with what? Faith. What was the, 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 the tools faith was what framed the world by the word of God. Amen. So that things which are seen when not made of evil. Meaning the things you see now were never there. All of it was created from the invisible. Mm. And oh, yes. now you, you are waiting for the visible. When I see you and mm. you're you say, I don't have one pound in my account. Yeah. You will never have it. Because the money is supposed Hallelujah. to come from what is not seen, not from what is seen. The mm. breakthrough yeah. is supposed to come from what is invisible, not from what is visible. Mm. Oh, yes. Amen. Because the world was framed by was was framed by faith God from things that were not visible, things that were now visible were made. Mm. When I tell you, oh, I see marriage coming, there's no husband. Yes, because you want to see a husband before you say yes. But the husband mm -hmm. is supposed to come from what you have not seen. You don't suppose, yeah. You're not supposed to see. That's what the scriptures say. I pray that this will really, really transform your mind. I tell you, you're yeah. healed. You're like, but I still feel the pain. Of course. Because by faith, you're supposed to receive your healing. Your healing is supposed to come from not the pain you're feeling, from the pain. You're <laughs> Hallelujah. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice through which he obtained witness that he was righteous god testifying of his gift and through it he being dead to abraham's sacrifice was not better than cain because of what he offered it was faith god was offering it is your faith in what you're doing that will bring the result amen have at heart Amen. What you have at hand will not determine what you will get. Literally, what you have at hand is not what God has for you. It's what you don't even have at hand that God has for you. Because the scripture says it is by, by faith that the world was framed so that what is visible will make not visible. What the logic statement? I'm sure some of you are really confused. <laughs> but when God come, came to create the world, there was really nothing. But it is faith that brought it. It is God's faith that, that brought what we can see now. So you are not meant, I don't know if some people are taking notes, you are not meant to see it, to have it. If you want to see it, to have it, then it's not easy. Easy at all. It is what you cannot see that faith will give it to you, will make it visible to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That's the first tool. Don't forget, we are still talking about breaking limitations. That is the first thing you need to break limitations. That is the first thing you need to break limitations. Hallelujah. Amen. By Verse 5 says, by faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. But before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God by faith. 
if you don't know how that your business will not happen if you don't know how to work in faith that your ministry will not happen you keep saying oh i'm called huh. i'm pastor Emmanuel. Huh. i'm prophetess uh cousin huh. and i'm looking at you i'm like where's the evidence <laughs> Why is the evidence? <laughs> because you are meant now to bring it to manifestation. Period embassy, you can see it now today, isn't it? It is. Because I went out to minister. There was no period embassy when I went out to, to minister to say period embassy. Was there any? No. 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 It is by faith that period embassy now came. It was from it was in the invisible. I brought it now to the visible. By faith, you can break limitations. Amen. You can break Amen. limitations. Not by Amen. prayer. Because religious people will turn up to this and they will not tell you the right strategy to use. The scripture did not say by prayer, the word was formed. It said by faith and by the word of God. Amen. Amen. You need this. Oh, go to that side. And say so this side like this for this my business. This my supermarket will be like this. That one will be like that. Then the name will be so I already have a name. I just prophesied I want to do <laughs> by faith and speak it into manifestation. Amen. Amen. All right, let's look at verse seven says by faith, no one being divinely warned of things not yet seen moved with godly fear, prepared an act for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which according to faith. We know when Noah was building the ark, yeah. so we're making a mockery of him. <laughs> this man is crazy. Yo. This ark is building. What is it for? Until when it happened. And the worst thing is when it happened, they were dead. They could not even come to come and stand there to testify to say, you know what? Sorry, we doubted you. I remember I was telling the Lord, I said, Father, just on the job, I want just one second. So I'll just call somebody in the and say, Did I not tell you? <laughs> I said, Daddy, just, just give me the opportunity. One second like this. So I'll just say, Hello, did I not tell you? <laughs> did I not tell you that Christ was coming? <laughs> Praise God. Don't mind me. I'm talking, but I wish God gives the opportunity. There's some people that we didn't call them and said, Did I not tell you? <laughs> like in the days of Noah, I wish Noah asked God for that opportunity to just open that window. Just open the window a little bit and just call. I don't want to call anybody's name that they say. I just say, Hi, really French. Did I not tell you? <laughs> Because he looks so stupid doing it. Nobody believed it until when it happened. But it was by faith when God spoke to him. God tried to prove what he said to him. But Noah went with faith and by faith and he started building the ark. What are you building for you by faith? Let me ask some of you here today. What are you doing from what I have told you by your faith? Let me tell you what God wants you to do. You are sad and waiting. <laughs> you are sad and waiting for me again to come and tell you. Go and learn how to drive. I don't know if she has started it. I've told some of you here that your company is this. I don't know if you, you're doing the plans already and all this. I don't know if you're doing it. I've told some of you things. I don't know how you envision it with the eyes of reality by faith. Imagine that if you were Noah, I'm sure all of us would have died. Because some of you, yeah. Hmm. No, mom, you know when you told me like that. I said, I'm just fast again and pray. <laughs> you know, mom, God told me the truth like this. I said, you know, you know, they never speak too much. Let me just pray again. Imagine. That even was you, you here. <laughs> I don't know what would have happened. No. <laughs> Praise God. 
Oh my goodness. I was, you know, I was just like, I said, I'm just praying again like this, like that. You want to show me not to pray more than me. See you. When you do pray, show me the evidence of that prayer. So, but again, even before I came, I've come and started a ministry. You'll sit there. You know, man, in 2007, like this, I knew about this calling. You're not even ashamed to say it. You are not even just ashamed like this. Your body saying it. Yes, it's true. I confirm to the prophecy. I know you've done nothing about it. In fact, this is about you about yeah, yes. Like this, like this. <laughs> Praise <laughs> God, I'm cracking up. This is you. You're like, woman, you know, you're like the fit of it like this. And it's accurate, it's true. What have you done about it? What have you done? The question is, oh God, what have you done about it? You know, it's true, it's true. Hey, you know, one day like that, God told me, you take it again, keep it. You'll relax. Another prophet will come and say, prophet, it's true. You know, you're like the seventh prophet. Like, okay. When the Lord told me I'll teach and lead you, I do not go to go and confirm you with any prophet. God said, I'll teach and lead. I literally sat and I was thinking it's my mind. Until prophet comes and says, no, your mind speaking is God. I do not even consult anybody again to say, I just went. So imagine if you were Noah. Hey, I'm sure you are, you'd have still been fasting and praying to today like that. You know how to fast and pray. God has said go, isn't it? God has said go. You know how to pray more than him. Some of you, yeah, that's why I said some of you are more than God. <laughs> you put God like this in a box. He says go to fast and pray. <laughs> God, I, I your mother I'm saying you are like the fit prophet like this that have told me this exact thing like this that I've been calling. <laughs> you are happy. You feel proud about it. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Then tomorrow you are in my inbox sending long, long message and read those things. Just pray for me like this. You know? Mom, just you know, just speak again one word like this. Me, you drink water, Gary. Then drink water, go water. Gary will call you no sugar like this. You'll be sighing in your mouth. <laughs> First, mom, just mom, see, just speak one word again like this. This last time, God is looking at you and nodding his head like this. That this one can never please me, because by faith, what have you what you've received? By faith, what have you done? Some of you here, some of you like money. If they tell you about this, so and you say, let me go first and pray to God. You know, the number of times God has told me. To sow seeds, I don't wake up and think one, two, three. As soon as I wake up, as soon as I wake up, straight to go and sow the seed. When he says it, all I ask is where and how. Do the seed and do what he says do. I don't need to fact and pray about anything. Some of you when you hear about money, okay, I'll, I'll think about it. You know, mm, I'll think about. It. You'll be thinking, you even, you even confirm, you know, prophetess is true. God laid it in my heart like this that I should do this in this ministry, but you've not done it by faith. Your, your mouth, you to say it. Hey, <laughs> and you're waiting for Angel Michael or Angel Gabriel to leave heaven and come. <laughs> That's why you're still there. That's another reason why it takes. That's why you're so limited. That's why you're so limited. <laughs> You know, some of the limitations are created by you. There is yes, no limitation. Most of them are created by you. One day, yes, Lord, yes, yes. I've given you something and I say it is yours. It is for you now to go and get it. Yes, yes. He said, go and get it. And whenever I say I'm going for it, God is like, go, you need to go like now, Ella. Because he wants you to put your faith to work by faith. God said this and I did it. That's when you please God. That's when you please God. When you do it your way, you don't please God. And the end result of it is for you to please God. You've done it. You can do it and it doesn't bring glory to the name of the Lord. And God is not pleased because you did it your way. But we're here to please God. Hallelujah. Amen. So before you know, that limitation, get up and do something about it. Hallelujah. Wow.
Amen. Amen. Verse 8 says, it's by faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he, he went out. No, some of you here know. I cannot just go out like this. I don't know where I'm going to. <laughs> but they just tell me again, are you sure you know about this? The scripture says Papa Abraham did not know where he was going to. He never knew where he was going to, but the Lord said, go. I have preached this about faith here to you. Anyway, I wish you can do something about your faith. I wish, and this morning the Lord told me, Ella, don't stop yourself from doing anything that God has laid in your heart to do. Because some of you are waiting for the audible voice of God. No. It might just be that you feel this in your heart. It is God ministry to you. Don't stop yourself. Don't pray about it. Go and do it. Don't even go to any prophet to confirm anything. Go for it. You'll be shocked. Even if the result is you have pleased God, you have pleased God. Come on, do you know what happened to Papa Abraham? We know the story, don't you? When he yeah, left, a lot of challenges. At some point, he even had to tell Lot, you know, I don't want to fight with you. Go that way, let me go that way. He faced challenges, but he the scripture says he pleased God. The end result of it is for you to please God. Hallelujah. Amen. He went out not knowing where he was going to. By faith, he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise, for he waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Amen. By faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive, and she bore a child when she was past the age, because she judged him faithful who had promised faith is very important and it's not just your kind of faith i believe to say i believe is different from having faith is two different things most of you are in the place of i believe and i believe that's why you're with you're stood there doing nothing saying i believe i'm just waiting for god to do something this this is the moment i don't want to hear in this ministry you know i'm just waiting for god to do something what god is waiting for you to do something you're waiting on him and that's what you know you know you know because i'm not ministry on face ministry on facebook my mind is very very free from toxicity do you understand what i mean yes, because a lot of people christians are so toxic that they say a lot of negative things all the time they'll be like i'm just waiting on god please pray for my spiritual life to grow <laughs> until i was telling myself yesterday it's been long i've not heard this prayer point of prayer for my spiritual life to grow. <laughs> i told myself i'm with adults now and i can say i'm a leader because oh. they are keeping my spirit i've not heard that kind of a prayer point before again <laughs> you know here hear people say things like friday is not going like you you don't hear all these negative things because a lot of people are so negative and full of toxic in them that they don't walk by faith. Oh, faith does not mean that you will get it right at the first attempt. No. Do you know how many attempts Papa did go through before it happened? He did not even live to see it. Do you know this? But it came to pass. You will not hear all this yeah. for kind of thing and they call themselves christians like you know i'm just waiting for for this like this to happen god is waiting for you to move make the mistake by faith and make it again by faith keep making the mistake by faith and do nothing at all that's when you please god in making a mistake by faith mm. Did, by faith again was it not sarah that took the baby and gave it to took sorry issue or uh, Took Abigail, her house, her maid, and get to Papa Abraham to have a child. Did God reject the promise, the covenant? No, no. God said, you know what? This baby, Ishmael, is not the hair, is not the promised child. The promised child is going to come from your wife, Sarah. How many mistakes did they make? A lot by faith. Because he was trying to, like, oh, let me do this, let me do this. So it's better you walk by faith and please God in a mistake than do nothing at all. Mm. And you know, you know, I've received this prophecy like that. It's for three years now. I'm just waiting for the right time in that, like that. Then I'll go. <laughs> the right time might be the worst time for the you. The time you think is right. 
you might face a hundred kind of challenges. Uh, you might face challenges that you were not meant to face at your right uh, time. But God's right time, the challenges will be the one that God has placed for a reason and for a purpose. Uh, uh, I hope someone is catching it, mom. Preach it, mom. This. I know people that are facing challenges now in doing what they are are doing it with challenges why because they took too long to do it what god asked them to do so now you try this is not working this is not working this is not working it's not great why is it not great you took too long to do what god asked you to do so now you're facing your own challenges not the challenges because probably somewhere else because you took your time now you're doing it where you think you have to do it and you ask that oh i'm just doing what god asked me to do in your own time in your own place you're also doing your own thing <laughs> all right Let's take the next, the next pointer is perseverance, perseverance, all right? James chapter 1 verse 12 says, Blessed is the one who perseveres on that trial, because having to the test, so we receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to Wonderful. those who love him. Yeah. Perseverance. <clears throat> or is it Christian? Perseverance is very important. You need to learn how to persevere in purpose. I, I was listening to this man of God. I love him so much. Reverend Bonke. And he said something very, very... He said, when God called him, the Lord told him, you minister in Africa. So he went to Nigeria, he ministered, when he ministered in Nigeria, he came back. After he came back to Nigeria for good nine years, they were denying him the visa. And they made allegations like he was opposing this, opposing that, opposing that. But he said that he did not give. Let me share a little bit with you to boost your faith. It's better you persevere in purpose than persevere in doing nothing or thinking I'm waiting on the Lord. There is nothing like that. Everybody would have handled it in purpose, going through everything they were going through and persevering and waiting on the Lord in purpose, not waiting out of purpose. You don't wait on God out of purpose. You wait on God in purpose. <clears throat> so he said, after about nine years now, he kept trying to go to Nigeria to minister. He could not. So he said, one day now he went, he said one time he decided to say, okay, let me go to another nation. He said he went to Botswana. From Botswana, he went to Benin Republic. <clears throat> so as he went to Benin Republic, he was in his hotel room. And invitation letter from the former president of that country. And they said, oh, he was like, oh, I heard you were in the country. I want to invite you. So he said he visited that president and had a conversation with him and they were like, okay. He said he ministered in that nation to cut the long story short. <clears throat> so, so he said this ex-president, former president sent him a letter saying, I want you to come to me. I, when he went to him, he told him that I want you to lead me to Christ the right way, the proper way. I want to be a proper born again. So he said he led him to Christ, <clears throat> ministered in that nation, went back to America. And he said after, as, yeah, he learned that that former president was running again for president in that nation, Benin Republic. So he said he went on his knees and prayed and said, let this man win. So when he won, he went back, I think he went back to Benin Republic and he met with the president and that president made mention to him that the president of Nigeria is his best friend. He said, they are like twins. He said, and he said, when the president said they are best, he was like, Thank God. <laughs> Nigeria, I'm coming. <laughs> you know that kind of a thing. They have been writing visa for oh. nine years. So now this, this president, now to this president, everything. This person said that, oh, don't worry. I'm going to just call the president of Nigeria now. He said he called the president of Nigeria. They had to send a private jet to Benin Republic to pick him up to Nigeria. Uh, he said, I yeah, went to Nigeria yeah. without a visa. I mean, is that <laughs> Wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now it was Amen. a person. They welcomed me, prepared everything Amen. around and me to start. I said, you know what happened again? Now yeah. he said when he went back to America after ministry, let me just help your faith here today. To tell that there are challenges in purpose, but God always make a way. 
He said he now sat again while in America. He heard on the news that this president, I don't know his name, he had an he had a had attack, right? So he was like, Wow, God, this is Satan again. Satan does not want me in Nigeria. So he said, What do I do now? So he said he went back again now. So the new president at Kenny. So he went back again to Benin Republic and now was asking this president, this other new president, is he your friend? He said, no, we are not best of friends. Besides, he just came to power. But he said, I can speak to him again because they denied him visa completely. So he was like, he was like, no, it's too early. You're not even friends. Don't do it. It's okay. I will wait. He said he went back to the United, to the States and he was praying and praying and praying. Then one time again, he came back to Benin Republic to minister and he learned that the by then it was Obasanjo. He was a general, a military general by that time in Nigeria. He came to Benin Republic to visit. So he, this general Obasanjo learned that the man, man of God, Renard Bonke, was right there in Benin Republic. So he invited him. He came to his, he went to the street, met with him, and he told him, you know, I've heard wonderful things about you. You know, pray for me. This is that. But he said he prayed. Then the general, he told the general that, oh, this is the problem. I want to come back to Nigeria to minister. The general said, I'm sorry, I can't give you a visa. There's nothing that has to be from the embassy. He said, okay, no problem. So this general went back. He went back to the state. He said, the next was he heard on the news that General Obasanjo is running for president in Nigeria. He said, go. I said, this general had given him. He, contact he was like, wow, Nigeria, here I come again. He said, what did he do? He went down on his knees and prayed and said, Father, because you've called me to minister in Nigeria, like Apostle Paul said, a great door of ministry has been opened, but there's a contention, there's a contentment. Wow. He said, please, cause Obasanjo to be the president of Nigeria so I can go back there. And guess what? He became the president again. Oh, so he yeah. said, yeah. His phone. He said he took his phone. I called him. I was like, President Obasanjo, this is Renard Bucky. Congratulations. I'm coming to the visa. <laughs> 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 I stood again. Presidential envoy again. Took him to Nigeria. And that was how he brought the mighty revival that he brought in Nigeria. Yeah, you see, yeah. always want to contend. And no one wants to make that way. This time he was going without visa. Presidential envoy. <laughs> That's why I said you need to work Thank on you. your faith. He did not give up. He did not say, Oh, nine years. I'm I'm letting it go. I mean, married for nine years. Men unable to have children for nine years, they have given up. He did not give up. He said, I'm not giving up. This very Nigeria, I will go there. Come rain, come shine. He didn't stop praying. He didn't stop looking for opportunities. He did not just pray and keep quiet. He spoke. He met people and spoke to them. Can you make a way for me? It's not to say, oh, you know, I'll just pray and wait. Then the Michael will just knock my door like this and then say, okay, I've spoken to this person on your behalf. Go. <laughs> Go now, he's ready. <laughs> it's not going to happen. <laughs> By faith, speak the word of God. Go and speak to them. By faith. I've told some of you here that this kind of giving you, some of you have seen it, this job, this one. You've not prepared any interview. You've not taken it to no company. You're, say, you're there saying, you know, I'm waiting for the right time like this. I'm just praying and fasting. No CV. You've not prepared no CV. You've not gone for nothing, nothing like that. It's not going to happen if you don't do what I'm telling you now. You have to wake up and do something about it. If there are people you need to talk to by faith, go and talk to them. If there are projects you need to start up or plans you need to start writing, start writing them now. There is nothing Amen. like that. The time you hear God's voice is the right time. Yes, the time yes. is the right time. Yes, Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So you must persevere. You must Amen. have to persevere in the course of, yes, I went the first time I was rejected. It's okay. Go the second time. Rejected. No problem. Go the third time. Keep going. Keep pushing. Break that limitation. Pray and go for it. You 
break the limit then. Another, I'm going to give you the next pointer. Trust in God's plan for your life. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans you have. God has for me plans to prosper me, not to harm me. Trust that God's plans for your life is for your prosperity. It is for your good. Everything that God has called you to do, it is for your good, for your betterment, for your good success, for a good testimony. Hallelujah. Proverbs Amen. chapter verse 5 to 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Some of you, you're here. You can trust that your stupid boyfriend that will break your heart in the next one minute with all your heart like this. You're even like proudly saying, you know, mom, you know what? I gave him everything like that. All my heart like that. Hmm. God is is here saying that. God is here saying trust in me with all your heart. You've carried that heart. You've given it to one on challenge in your child there. One stupid man that will break that heart like that. I don't even know how they break people's heart. When they said my heart was broken. God is saying trust in me with all your heart. Your trust and your heart is somewhere else. So you and I will know. This man, he promised me this like that. See, he's so sweet. This man is so sweet. So I love him with all of my heart, all of me like that. <laughs> You're even saying it. <laughs> and I'm giving your heart to you. <laughs> hey, so you come to me and say heartbreak. And I say they are taking eternity. They are taking life out of you. I feel like. Mommy, I feel like life, life is gone. I'm just dying like this. I'm like that. I will bury you in the morning. <laughs> but God is saying, trust in me. Do not put your trust on men. That's the scripture. I think Jeremiah, woe to a man that put his trust on man. It is terrible to put your trust on man. Mm -hmm. Because they, they only, because they trust in me. God have not asked anybody anywhere, anywhere in the scripture to trust on anybody. Not even your mother, not even your father, not even your sister, not even your husband. Not even. <laughs> and you know, you, you know, especially women know how to say it. You know, I gave him all my heart, everything, my body, my soul, my money, everything like this to this man. <laughs> you know how to, you can yes. give that to him why not give all to god <laughs> your money you don't give to god you're giving it to a man that will break your heart like this and it's like, yeah. they say give all when they say give your money all to god you you know what happened but you say you know all my money i was working like that and giving it to that man how will he not break your heart when god said give you all to me not to a man <laughs> you know all my heart my heart like this i gave it to to him i just feel like i'm i'm going to die like it's true, you you definitely die because you did what God said don't do. So the tantamount of sin is death. <laughs> You're tantamount to death because you can't. <laughs> the word of God. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to die like that. It's true, you can really die, and God will allow you to die. You disobeyed him. <laughs> yes, mother. Oh, praise God. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. Trust God with all your heart, all right? Amen. Trust in God that he has a perfect plan for your life. And do not lean, do not try to understand what you know like that. You know, it's easy for people to trust people and not to trust God. I don't know why. You even know that this man like this is cheating on you. You're still like that. I don't understand how some women do it. Maybe some of you would give, tell me, but I will never do it. <laughs> hey. No, oh, that this man is lying to you. You even be saying, oh, and you know, I used to see his phone, but I'll ask like this. You say no, you believe him. Hey, yeah. ah, and you call it love. That one is not lawful, it's lost. Yeah. <laughs> you need deliverance. When you start feeling like that, like that, you start seeing the truth, and they tell you, not the truth. This thing you've said is like, come, we, that one will happily deliver you. So you should not get to that point of saying, I feel like dying right now, like that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll deliver you very quickly before you get to that level. Hallelujah. Amen. You need to do is seek wisdom. Amen. 
things I'm giving you, take note of it. It's very important to break limits. Seek wisdom and guidance. Proverbs 16, 3 says, commit to the Lord whatever you do. Commit to the Lord whatever you do and he will extend. Seeking God's guidance can help you make the right decisions and overcome limitations. I think you do not hear the word of God I read. Commit to the Lord whatever, whatever you do. Even that man that has to break your heart, commit him to God. If you commit him to God, you will not break your heart. Before Amen. you even break your heart, God will break. I'm not saying you will not disappoint. If he's the wrong one, God will take him out even before he gets to the point of breaking your heart. Mm. That's what I'm saying. The problem is when now you get to that point, <laughs> this one, I feel good. I think everything is fine now. I don't need God here. <laughs> My heart feels good, you know. Whenever I think about him, I don't even sleep. I can never even pray. So it shows yeah. I'm in love. <laughs> so God, that's why I know there's a problem. For you to love somebody and not be able to talk to God, there's a big, 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 big problem like that. Big fights. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Come to the Lord you and he will Amen. establish your plans. What is the secret of succeeding in the plans you have? He will establish it for you. If it's not the right one, he will still not establish it. If it's the right Amen. one, he will establish it. That is the secret. Amen. Patience. If you don't even know the right thing to do, it's okay. Father, I want to buy a Range Rover. Daddy, should I buy? It? Like me, I always talk to God. What should I buy? If he says no, Ella, that's him establishing the plans. Good. Yes, Ella, he has established it. That you and I talk like I talk to God about everything I have to do, and whenever He tells me now this is established, you can. It doesn't even need to say you can do it now, Ella. This is established, or you can go, go ahead with it. Sometimes they say you can go ahead with it, Ella. I know I'm good to go. I know I'm good to go. That plan has been established by God. No matter what happens, I'm going to succeed with it. Even in the things I wanted to do last year and the Lord want me. Do you know why I, I, I'm still succeeding in doing the things? Because I committed it to God. I committed it to God. So now he had to, he's still helping me to do it. And now he has, he, he even told me, he told me, about, he told me, no, Ella, it is done already. You've already achieved it. Why? I committed it to God. That's why the scripture said, commit your ways to the Lord. Commit whatever you do to the Lord and he will establish your plans. Who will establish your plans for you? God. Do I need a plan? Yes. Don't stay without a plan. Yesterday I sat, where was I? And I was thinking about this. Okay, dad, I have to do this like this. Do that. But when I do it, I talk to the Lord. I have to do this like this. Do this like that, like that, like that. Like right up to the year 2025, I already have a plan of what I want. I'm doing from this year like that, right up to the year 2025. But how do I do? I talk to the Lord about it. So even if I'm messing up because I've told the Lord about it, help me. That's the secret of getting help in everything you do, even when you're doing the wrong thing. Today, if I go with the wrong man, the first thing I should do is I commit him to God. I pray about I pray for him. I pray about it. That's how I get to know that this is the wrong, this is the right. If God does not establish it, it's the wrong. If he establishes, is the right. Because the scripture says, commit to the Lord whatever you do and he will establish your plans. You see how simple it is? Instead of you mm -hmm. stressing yourself, instead of you struggling by your own and, you know, commit it to God and let him establish it for you. Let him break the limitations. Mm -hmm. If there were meant to be limitations, God, because his, God is the one establishing it, the limitations will be broken for you. Simple like that. The enemy meant for evil. God has turned it for my good. You might even be doing something and the enemy is ahead of you in it. God will turn it for your good when you commit it to God. He'll establish it Amen. differently. All right. The next scripture that I'm, the next point I'm going to talk to you about is perceive opportunities. Perceive opportunities. So many people are so dumb headed. They don't think, they don't sense nothing. They don't even, in fact, they will walk past an opportunity like this and not even know that that opportunity was for them. An opportunity will be at their face like this. They will never see it. 
look at what the scripture says in Philippians 4 verse 13. I can do all things strengthen me with the strength that comes from God. We can break all limitations because you can do all things. Perceive, um, Apostle Paul, this, this scripture said this, he said, make the most of every opportunity. Make the most of every opportunity. Day in, day out. 24-7, uh, 24-7, 31 days, 365 days in a year, every blessed 24 hours day, you are posed with opportunities. Every 24 hours day, again, you are posed with opportunities. You have to be able to perceive opportunities. Sometimes that limitation is right there to perceive an opportunity to break the limit. You just do not know. You are ignorant about it. You just do not perceive the opportunity that, oh, now I've got to move. Now is the right time to apply for that job. Now is the best time to plant that seed. Now is the right time for me to go to Nigeria. For me, now is the right time to make that phone call to talk to this person about this thing. You just did not perceive it. That's why we need our spiritual antennas. Imagine that if I was, if I could not perceive in every program that we have in this ministry, I don't just wake up and say, let's fast. Mm -mm -mm. I don't just wake up, even this message I'm ministering, God gave it to me, and I already have three other messages that I have to minister to you as well from the lord so imagine that if i could not sense if, if i didn't have the and i don't keep asking the lord daily to enlighten the eyes of my understanding we would be doing our own thing and you're thinking yeah it's a ministry of course we are doing we are we are preaching the right message and you know you know like that but you are moving in plan and agenda that's what perceiving is very very important now i even know that zambia is one of the nations that that i have to meet so if i go now if i have now to i already know like i have a list of i know that america is one of them but god did not call me for america he called me for africa but there is a man of god there that i have to meet that i know already <laughs> then i already know oh, i have to go to south africa i already know i have to go to nigeria because my spirit literally yes. confessed. I already know I have to go to Zambia. These are key nations that God have personally, have, you know, like today in a dream I was in Zambia. <laughs> and it was about the work of God. So I already know that this is where I have to go to. I cannot go to the wrong nation. If I decide tomorrow to say, okay, uh let me start uh you know visiting nations to minister i know this is the nation i have to minister go to this is the nation i have to go to this is the nation i have to go to when the comes because god has made mention of these nations the opportunity will definitely come he might send a man of god to come and invite me over he must come and invite me over opportunities come it's not every opportunity that come that you have to say yes to, but there are opportunities that you sense in the spirit. That is it, and you go, you break the limit. You manifest differently. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It is very, 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 very important that you know all, all of this. All right. Let me quickly take you to Exodus. I want to talk to you about, I'm just going to, we know of so many people in the scripture that broke limits. See, let me let me tell you this so you understand this. Do you know why in the Bible only particular people are made mention of? Anybody aware? I love my session. Please don't sit like, are you falling asleep? Am I boring? Wait, what is happening? Okay. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, mommy! <laughs> wow, wow, some people just got mute and like, like I'm talking to myself. I feel like I'm all by myself here. Wow, yeah, we are enjoying Praise you too much. All right. Enjoy. 
how many people know why there are just very few significant people make mention of in the Bible out of the billions of Christians that God has? Anybody has an idea? All right, no problem. I will tell you. It's because the broke limits. Oh, as simple as that. <laughs> it's because they did what the others did not do. Mm -hmm. It's because in those 10 people, only one did what the other nine could not do. Do you understand? Yes, yes. yes. If you want to break limits, you must be ready to do the ridiculous. You yes. must be ready to do what someone hasn't done before. You don't make a record with what somebody has done already. Osen Bolt did not break the record because someone yes. had had that speed limit already. And the seconds and the time no you don't break limits with what someone has done already you don't set a pace with what someone has done already you don't set a record with what someone has done already i know so many of you like to live a life of medical many of you like you know it's just okay you know i just i don't want all this i don't want to be too spiritual you know i just want to be like normal mm -hmm. like the god said you are spirit you are this i don't want to be too spiritual he even calls you a quickening spirit <laughs> they broke Amen. limits there were thousands and thousands of millions of people but these ones did what the others could not do amen if you want to break limits you must be ready to do what no one has done don't go and copy somebody's somebody's company somebody's ministry and then you've broken limits that's a lie the broke limit let's look at moses all right exodus let's just read from exodus 4 11 to 12. then the lord said to him who has made man's mouth who makes him mute or deaf or seen or blind is it not i the lord now therefore go and i will be with your mouth and teach you what you should speak let me tell you something Ash, the bible is so sweet the word of god god is the word of god picks you out of the crowd and places you out there not physically because it's more of a faith thing you just stand with 10 people and you know you're different you just stand with 20 people you know you're different and when you speak or when you do something they're just like hey, i just this you how did you do it like that did you moses knew he had a limitation but he broke limits the most yeah. to pray. You know, I really want to help someone today because some of you like this thing. I'll fight and pray. You must let me just pray like that and do nothing about it. Moses knew he had a limitation. He complained to God. He said, speak. I'm sure if you read a little bit from verse 9, coming down to verse 10. He said, God, I can't speak. You know, I'm uh, you know, I cannot speak well. And what did the Lord tell him? He said, who has made man's mouth? Who makes him mute or, or deaf or see not I the Lord? So why are you complaining back to me? Imagine you standing before the Lord and say, you cannot do this. And God is asking you. You cannot speak and it's like, who made this? Who gave you this mouth? <laughs> he said, you're standing before the solution and you're thinking you cannot do it. Let's okay, just go to Exodus chapter 4. I'm sure some of you don't. You, you know, you, you, sometimes when you read that scripture, you don't understand. But thank God you have me here. You just read, you think, I'm reading one nice story like this, you know, and it's, you know, <laughs> you don't know that there are messages there that is speaking mm. to you. All right, Exodus chapter 4. Let's just let's, let me read it with you. So you can hear, I know you know it already, but you, you, it will come to you differently now. And you understand how to break limits. You don't, God does not call you or uses you because you are perfect and you've got all the talents that you need. There's an inability in you. There's a limitation in you that we've got. It can become an ability and we've got, you can go beyond that limit. Amen. Amen. I know you know that limitation so very well. Amen. That's what I'm telling that with God, God can God is asking you, where do you think those limits are coming from? Did I know am I not the one that created you and placed you on the earth? 
Mm. So do you think you cannot do this thing if I can do this one? Hallelujah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. but you, you cannot do it and you believe them all right then moses said to the lord let's just read from verse 10 all right exodus chapter 4 let's read from verse 10 then moses said to the lord oh my lord i am not eloquent neither before nor neither before nor since you have spoken to your servant but i am slow of speech and slow of tongue and hear what the Lord told him. The limitations you see does not exist. It does not exist. Whether you like it or not. The limitation does not exist. Verse 11 says, So the Lord said to him, Who has made man's mouth? Oh. Or who makes the mute, the deaf, the seen, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with your mouth, and teach you what you shall see. Hallelujah. Yeah. This is a mm. message for someone here. Go. Hallelujah. Go and God will be with you. But Amen. you have to go. Amen. You have to go first. Mm. Amen. Okay? You've complained a lot to the Lord. And he said, am I not the one that created you? Mm. I the one that gave you the mouth. That you say you cannot speak. Am I not the one that gave you the eyes that you say cannot see? Am I not the one that gave mm. you that bank account that you say there's no money there? Oh. Am Amen. I not that you say they're not paying you enough? How come you know about the things that they cannot do and you don't know the one that I have done or I can do? Hallelujah. Amen. And Moses went and the assignment was accomplished. Amen. Because God now gave it. It is there you can continue reading he now gave aaron to be his mouth and he was god to aaron he said when god speaks now to moses he will tell aaron and he'll speak it god has a solution to every problem that you have Hallelujah. god has limitation in your life there is an answer there is a way there is a path there is something for you that will substitute or that will make for that limitation you think you have in your life Oh, I cannot put to it. God is asking, who gave you that womb? <laughs> that womb, who gave you that womb? Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this, the examples, these people I'm bringing to you, there are people that were with limitations. Because if I bring this one without any, you know, but this one, there are people that they were all limited, but they broke records. They Amen. all had limitations. Because you are sat here and you're looking at yourself, you're pointing out, your, your mind is reading to you right now, even as I'm talking, spelling out mm. like that, you, you know, this thing like that, like that, like that. Those limitations exist all on your mind. They don't exist for real. It is not there in the word of God. It is not there in your life. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right, let's look at another man, Joshua. Let's look at another man. Uh no, not Joshua. Let's look at David. Let's, let's look at David. Uh, first Samuel chapter 17, verse 45. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Today, David had a limit. You all know the story. So let's not spend much time telling you what you know. Did David have a limitation or not? Do we know what his limitation was? What was David's limitation? It was a little boy. Thank you. It's like when I'm teaching the word of God, some of you just go blank like this. It's like who you? It's like you're like Ella. Ella knows this thing, so whatever I say might not be. Let me just get it from her. As a little boy, the scripture yeah. defines that as a very big man. Big. He did not. He was not only big. 
but his suit he wore oh only the one punching and let me tell you it will put david it will kill david david was a little boy a shepherd boy and this man Man was so big he was limited in that he was small but there was something in him that was bigger than his physicality the god in him yeah man that was standing in front of Goliath. on the inside he was bigger than the outside he was smaller david had a limitation he had a limitation because you on your mind you're thinking god has you know Everything is like that. These people like that. It was just flowing like that. The anointing was just going like that. Is me here? That I'm mad. Please just anoint me. Small anointing like that. Just impact me. Yeah. Just mind. Yeah. Everywhere. It's been long like this thing that please just impact me. What? The Christ on the inside of you. You're moving around and looking for things that God has given to you. You're not making use of it. Facebook, they'll be telling me, please just, just impact me like this. Play for my eyes to be open like that. My head. it is so free from very some kind of things that I have not seen it in the word of God. The word is so pure in me, so flowing in me, like I'm a new wow. creation, not hearing all this negativity. You're asking for what God has given to you. Yes, that's fine. But the God that is in you is bigger than that limitation. He's mightier. He's greater. Hallelujah. Please don't forget. Amen. So when you think of your limitation, when your mind speaks to you, or the voice of fear speaks to you, speak back. Say, I know Moses. Moses was not a man eloquent in speech. Like, like Ella, that is eloquent in speech. I remember somebody asked me a few days ago, can you sing? I laughed. I said, if I sing here, yeah, you sleep on the floor. <laughs> As if I see, you would sleep on the floor and laugh out your thumbs, <laughs> laugh out your lungs, everything in you will fall out from laughing at my singing. But I'm like, if, if you tell me to talk, I'm eloquent in speech by the grace of God. I'm eloquent. I said, if you tell me to talk, I'll talk. But he says, hey, you, you will lie down and you will from here to that end and come back and say, wait. And one, one man of God told me, it's like, Ella, it's like this, you're singing, it's getting worse things then. <laughs> I'm laughing. <laughs> so what? You're me singing, it's getting worse things then. <laughs> like, don't worry about it. When I need to sing that time like this, God will just be one of my singers here like that, my worshippers here like that, they'll be my singing, they'll be my voice, and I'll just be <laughs> When I get to, to where they say sing, Sandra will appear. Or so, Sima yeah. will appear. Sandra will appear. No, yeah. Maybe I'm going to sing for me. And I'll just be yeah. as Aaron was to, to Moses. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. There's no way yeah. all together. But when the need comes for it to be done, God will provide a solution. You break the limit. Oh, just, yeah. know, just know it that God will make it happen. Hallelujah. Sometimes I'm giving but I even forget the song I was singing. <laughs> I forget the lyrics of the song. <laughs> and I go in tongues. I'm like, Holy Spirit, help me. Don't do this to me now. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm waiting now. Maybe Sandra will just go tell the song. She will stay quiet. Ah, what is it now? Because she just understand that now I've lost the lyrics. I don't know I was singing. <laughs> I tell me to talk on top of here tomorrow. I'll say I have a lot to minister to you, but if you say sing, I'll sing and the lyrics. Even the lyrics I know like that, I'll get there and forget it. <laughs> That's why I have my backup. My voice will just come up. Like, please, when I'm singing, you hear me, I stop saying, No, no, I've missed, I've forgotten the lyrics. I don't know how to sing this song anymore. Oh, I don't know. But I must say, Oh, you're done. Pastor Sandra, now you know. Now you know. Yeah, now I know. Now I know. <laughs> 
See, I did not want to tell you about this, but let me just tell you now. So if it happens again, just carry on with the song. I've forgotten the lyrics. I don't know. <laughs> I'm very bad with the lyrics. I know the lyrics of the song. Eh? I'm terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but thank God, she's yeah. now. Even next, we just say I go and stop. Continue. Okay, okay mommy. Okay. Okay. But thank God, I have common sense. So when I end, I just go in tongues. Then I think about <laughs> it. Good. Praise God. Hallelujah. So you have a limitation with singing as well. Do you understand? No one has yeah. it all together. But I have to sing. God, even when God came into this mission, you and Ella could not sing. He knew I'm, in, I'm terrible with singing. But now I have to sing. So these, these are messing up. No problem. I know I have my backup. <laughs> he has given me a backup. This one. So I broke the limit away with the backup. So don't want to think I have yes, to do all by myself for it to be perfect. God can still give you back up. Exactly. Someone Hallelujah. 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 Great. But if I hear somebody make mention of this year, it will not be easy with you and I. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking anyways. <laughs> I'm joking. Emmanuel told me he could sing. Emmanuel cannot sing nothing. When Emmanuel was giving, <laughs> when Emmanuel was leading prayer. Could he lead worship? Could he sing anything that makes sense? Some of you just be laughing at me, like you know you can sing. Emmanuel was like, I can sing. I, would, ah, I was listening to Emmanuel sing. I could never hear what you were singing. I'm like, is that my worship? My singing is better than your back. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Man, you're in <laughs> 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 like that. I can wash a man. I don't know how to wash him. Nothing. Let me tell you, I'm listening to your sing it. Don't make no one here that cannot wash. Another man of God. Let's go to Second Corinthians chapter twelve. Hallelujah! Praise God. We love you, Daddy. Second Corinthians chapter twelve. My shadow of a shadow, Let's read from. Um, uh second Corinthians chapter 12 let's read let's read from verse 8 concerning this thing i pleaded with the lord three times that it might depart from me and he said to me my grace is sufficient for you for my strength is made perfect in weakness very for most gladly i would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of christ may rest upon me Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in meat, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Ooh, do we know the man of God that was speaking here? My husband, Apostle Paul. My husband, Apostle Paul. He was the one speaking. Even the great man of God had a limitation. Apostle Paul had a limitation. He, and the Lord told him, my grace, he had a tone in his flesh. The Lord told him, my grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in this your weakness. In this your limitation, my strength is made perfect in it. Mm. Do you understand this? Is someone getting this? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Are you are you blessed? Are you blessed? Yeah. Yes, are blessed. Is someone still laughing at me? No, <laughs> are you not? I am. If you laugh at me, I'll make you worship now for two hours and see if you'll be able to carry on. <laughs> 
Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. The man of God, hallelujah. he had weaknesses and limitations. But what did he do? He rejoiced in his weakness. He rejoiced in his weakness. He said, God's strength is made. The Lord told him that his grace is sufficient for you. Even in that one problem that you think this one like that, God is saying, my grace is sufficient in that limitation. Amen. He said, for my strength is made perfect in weaknesses. Amen. In weak, even God knows you have weaknesses. Right. So what is God saying? Draw strength from me in that your weak, your limitation. I know mine, and I'm not bothered about it. I draw my strength from the I know. Because God has, mm -hmm. you know, there is no one without a limitation, without a weakness. No matter how anointed you are. That's why so many people are moving around and looking for impartation. Something, oh, if Ella just impacts me like that, I'll be perfect. You don't know I'm here, I cannot even wash you. I don't know songs. I don't even know how to capture the lyrics. You don't even know. <laughs> but you're looking for impartation. <laughs> you're there, you can even worship. But I cannot worship. What do you do now in that weakness? You draw strength from the Lord. And you know that you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. Hallelujah. Even that weakness, God can turn it around for you, uh, your strength. Amen. When you have a weakness and God, God becomes your strength in that weakness, already that limitation, that will be away. So, why do you think? There are limits in your life because you lack knowledge on how to draw strength or on how to get answers for those limitations. I think they are the only one with limitations. Most people think they are the only ones with weaknesses. Even Apostle Paul cried to the Lord. The Lord said, no. Did the Lord say, I'm coming to take it that weakness or that limitation? No, no. because that's, that's why I tell some of you, relax. What do you expect God to, to say? He will not say. That's why some of you don't believe this is it. Because you think he will just say, hey, I'm coming now. This problem, I'm taking it away now like this. <laughs> You're wasting your God. That's what you do. You can't prophet, just pray for me. I believe that just one word like this, you always wasting your time. Just one word like that will just solve the problem. God is saying, draw strength and you can do all things through me that strengthen you. That's, I'm giving you secrets today. Secrets. Taking limitations. I know you were coming today to think there's some sort of a thing I'm going to do like that. Like Harry Potter. And then you, you just appear in your promised land like this. <laughs> Even you there. Some of you want to go to America. You don't have a passport in your house. You've not made a thought. But now you're expecting me to just say, I see a visa like that. I see you in America. What have you done? Uh -uh. What fit by faith? What have you done? Some of these prophets, they have already told you that, don't worry, just sow a seat and I'll just pray like this. Visa will appear with a passport that does not exist. <laughs> I have a passport in the realm of put visa there. You don't even need to do the passport anymore. <laughs> Work by faith. By faith, I want to say it. I go for my passport first. Walk by faith. Walk by faith. Hallelujah. Amen. I hope I'm blessing someone here today. You are, you are. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. So I'm talking to you about. I told. I spoke. Let me speak to you about a few women before we round up for today. All right. Let me speak to you about a few women because I've spoken about men. Some of you now will be thinking, eh, women now, I'm a woman, so how do I break the limit? I've spoken about Sarah already. <laughs> Let me talk to you about the woman called oh, Miriam. Have we heard about Miriam? 
Let's go to Exodus chapter 50. See, there are so many women in the Bible. So many. I'll make a compilation of the list eh, and I'll send it to the group. Some of you will be shocked. And some people have told you, no, women cannot, you're believing them. They have limited you. So if any man tell you from today, I've told you people that this one, a woman cannot do, just tell them that now I'm doing it because you could not do it. So I'm substituting you. I'm complimenting you. Simple. Because if you could do it, why would God be getting me to do it? I will not be sweeping the floor if you had swept it. Simple. So I'm doing what you've not done. <laughs> oh, that's how God breaks limits. How God breaks limits. Exodus 15. Let's read from verse. Let's read from verse 19. Exodus 15 from verse 19. All right. For for the horses of Pharaoh went with his chariot and his horsemen into the sea. And the Lord brought back the waters of the sea. And the Lord brought back the waters of the sea <coughs> upon them. But the children of Israel went on dry, went on dry land in the midst of the sea. Mm. Then Miriam the prophetess. I remember one time my mother said she has never heard anything as a prophetess in the Bible. <laughs> That this name I've given to myself and I'm calling myself in is an abom abomination. <laughs> that was my late mom. Don't mind her. <laughs> then Miriam, the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, <clears throat> took the timbre in her hand. And all the women went out after her with timbres and with dances. And Miriam answered them, sing to the Lord. <clears throat> Pardon me. For he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and its rider he has thrown into the sea. We all know it was like an abomination. People always say, ah, there was no woman. There was no woman in the New Testament. Or bring women in the New Testament. You hear. So what they say, Apostle Paul said this. This same woman was ministering with Apostle Paul. <laughs> when you don't understand the context of the text, you mislead everybody. You just go and take that text like that, <clears throat> the context like that, and say, this one says this. But the whole text is about something else. So this was Miriam now leading the crowd in worship. She was leading them in worship. She broke the limit as a woman. And she was Aaron's brother, sister. Miriam was Aaron's sister. She led the people of Israel in worship. Some of you here, you'll be so shy. See, shyness is, 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 is the tool that the devil used to limit you. Especially women. Hey, you know I'm shy. You know I'm shy. You're shy. But when you're in that room like that with that man, you're naked, moving in front of him like that. You're not shy. To worship God like that, do something for God, you're shy. You know, I fear the crowd, but you don't fear somebody that's not your husband to be in front like that. Hey, God will help you, women. Eh? God will help women like this. Hey, hey, God. You're not trying to parade naked in front of one stranger like that. Not your husband, no. But now you're shy to worship God. You see, you see, women, women will stand and be like, do it, you, this will be like you. Do it, make with their shoulders like this. But if say man say hello, you not say you go, you wanna go. <laughs> the neighbor that has disguised himself in women is a stride. May I may you not be that one in the name of Jesus? Amen. May, Amen. may you be the one like Miriam to pick up the timber and start worshiping God. Amen. Amen. Not waiting, looking at Sandra like somebody will be waiting, uh, looking at Sandra like that. It's fine. It's Sandra, when her connection is disturbing. Nobody will pick up like that and start doing something to break the limit. You're waiting for me to say, oh, you're waiting. Where's Sandra? Oh, you're waiting. Cousin. Oh, Augustina. That's fine. Mali did. Everybody's expecting somebody to. You will never break limit if you have that kind of a mind. Making your shoulder like, in church, you making your shoulder like that. No, you. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Instead of being up, to jump and start worshiping God. When I go to church, 
When mom just said, God is good. I, I'm standing up already. Praise the Lord. I don't need to know who is there. I'm standing up already. Like, well, you are shy to even stand up. Yeah, in that one like that, that you and I will know. May God have mercy. <laughs> you will never Amen. break him. You only know how to hide in darkness and do things there. You don't make impact in your bed or in the corridor. Impact is made in public. Imagine if Jesus, all these things he did, he was hiding. And this once he said, tell nobody. Nobody heard about it. Nobody will even know that Jesus did something. Mm. I'm sure the Pharisees, the prophecy would have been fulfilled. Everything would have led to one occurrence as it all happened. And God now died on the cross and saved us. It would have happened. You have to be bold. God has not given us the spirit of fear. Be bold. Miriam came out and started worshiping God. She let everybody in worship. Some of you be like, hey, there are 2,000 people here. <laughs> I don't have the heart. I don't have the heart. What is which kind of heart you want to have again? Or is the one I don't know? The one you already have. Is it not heart? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Another woman in the New Testament called Lydia. Ma Lydia. Lydia. Acts chapter 16, verse 14. Lydia. 16. Hallelujah. It says, Lydia was a businesswoman. Sorry, on the Sabbath. Let me just go read this first on the sabbath we went outside the city gates to the river where we expected to find a place of prayer we sat down and began to speak to the women who had gathered there one of those listening was a woman from the city of Titaria, named lydia a dealer in purple cloth she was a worshiper of god the lord opened her heart to respond to paul's message When she and the members of her household were baptized, she invited us to her home. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my house. And she persuaded. Do you know why Lydia, this is all Lydia did, but this is us talking about Lydia in the Bible every day. Do you understand that limit breaking does not need for you to do something big as you think you have to do it? You just have to do something courageously that nobody is willing to do. That is how you break limits. Something someone hasn't done. You just have to do it. If you want to break limit, she invited the man of God to her house. And this is her now in the Bible. We are talking about her today. It can be you. It can be you, but you're thinking, you know what? I don't have what it takes. You think you have to do something mighty like that before you're commended by God. No. An act of faith to God is what glory. All right. Let's look at another woman. I want to just, this other woman, I just want to just talk a little bit on this woman called Boy. Phoebe, isn't it? There are so many women in the Bible we don't know about her. Phoebe, Romans chapter 16. Let's read from verse 1 to 4. I commend to you our sister Phoebe, a deacon of the church in Centria. I ask you to receive her in the Lord in a way worthy of his people and to give her any help she may need from you. But she has been the benefactor of many people, including Priscilla, and Aquila, my co-workers in Christ Jesus, they risked their lives for me. Not only I, but all the churches of the Gentiles are grateful to them. What can you do for the Lord? She was a deaconess in church, a, a trusted servant. But Apostle Paul said, women should not speak this, calling Apostle Paul's name in vain. Their mouth, they will bite their mouth when next they say Apostle Paul said this. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. This is for He did this. We know Mary, the mother of Jesus, limit breakers. Limit breakers. There's another woman called the Shunammite woman. Her name wasn't mentioned in the book of Second Kings, chapter 4. Her name wasn't mentioned. But the scripture said this woman welcome. She learned that there was a man of God that comes to minister in the neighborhood. See, there are things you can 
in two. That will break limits. That is a record breaker for the Lord. Don't look at record breaking as the world sees it. It's an act of service to the Lord. All these women that have been mentioned in the Bible. Great Aquila, Priscilla. Today, do something like 20 billion like that in your account before you say, I can do break record. No. Act of service to God. The Shunammite woman, her name was not mentioned. Of it's a wealthy woman. I remember, do you, how did I really know about the story as well? A few days ago, the Lord told me, Ella, no, when I was praying, I just said the Shunammite woman. I just read it, it did not make sense. I asked the Shunammite woman. Then he told me, he said, Ella, you are like the Shunammite woman. I went now to read more about the Shunammite woman. That was when I noticed that this woman, she was a well to do woman. She was married, but she did not have a child what happened i know some of you don't even know about her <laughs> then she welcomed she learned that there's a man of god elijah that comes to minister was it elijah or is elisha no it's eli no it's elisha with gehazi it was elisha so now one day she decided when the man of god came to minister in her community she decided to tell she prepared the scripture says she prepared a room she told her husband that there's this man of god that comes to minister let's just welcome let's invite him into our home and give him a place to rest and some food so they invited so she invited a life to her offered him a bedroom and some food because he always is like every day Elisha was coming to minister there, but nobody thought of it. The fact that, you know what, I can invite this man of God to my house and give him food and a place to rest. That's how thoughtful the woman was. She's a woman of great courage and a good heart as they describe her. I invited Elisha. Then Elisha came to her and noticed that she was barren. See something your good works will always bring a blessing to you don't ever miss the opportunity to do something good don't say oh this is not for me there are 20 people here let somebody do it or oh, there are 10 people here let this person lead the prayer or the worship i must not be the one all the time always stay back or wait for me to say something or for someone to say something before you take it upon yourself and do something for the lord Look at what happened. She was barren, but the scripture says she was not even bothered about it. Neither was she, does she, did she even really want a child, but she was barren. So Elisha, after Elijah visited her, he noticed that this woman was barren. So Elisha pr prophesied to her. She did not even ask Elisha, like some of you, when you welcome a prophet now in your house, a man of God, you'll be forcing them. Just pray for me. Just bless me. You, we do all these cynical things. It's like you're looking for a reward back from what you've done. She did not ask Elisha to prophesy to her or pray for her. No. So Elisha prophesied to her and said, by this time next year, you have a son. She said, no, man of God. I don't. She was denying it. She did not want. She said, do not invite you to my house to come and bless me. I don't want. Elisha said, what I've said is what it is. By this time next year, she had a son. And this son, the scripture says, this son got ill and, and died. She went back to Elisha. When she was going to Gehazi, saw her. Gehazi told Elisha, it's the Shunammite woman. So the, Gehazi now, and Elisha gave his cloak, his garment to Gehazi, take and go and pray for the child. But the woman cried and said, man of God. She was calling Elisha man of God. He said, man of God, I do not ask for a child. You were the one that prophesied and this. See, imagine a man of God giving you a child and it happened. So you don't even need to want it. But once a man of God speaks the word, it is what it is. It happened. The child was sick and dying, went back to the man of God. And the man of God sent his mate, Geazi, Geazi, go and do this. Like I said, like Sandra, go and do this. But you can know. It was not Geazi that professor about the child. It was you. And I even told you I do not want the child, but insisted, please come with me and come and rescue my child. So Elisha went. The scripture said Elisha went and did what? Did he lie on the child, the dead child? And the child came back to life. The child came back to life because I prophesied something to you. I can end well with you. 
because I said it, I can make sure as a prophet that it ends well with you. This was a woman that broke records, broke a limit. How did she receive her blessing? Coming, just going to a man of God who do not even was like looking for a place and said, please, I want you to visit, come to my home and rest. Let me make you some food. Little gestures, but she received a big blessing of a child. That she was, she was not even doing it, expecting something in return. There are things that can break limitations in your life. Her limitation was broken not because she prayed and fasted, but was kind to a servant of God. Even when the child was sick, the man of God still brought back life to that child. It's not always about saying, I pray and fast. What good works are you doing? Your good works can break limitations. I have a problem because you say, I will pray and fast. No. In all the scriptures I've quoted here to you, did you hear any one of them there that says somebody prayed and fasted like that, then the limit was broken? Mm -hmm. I thank God that some of you, are, you came here for this service because you will start thinking and doing things differently. You, a lot of people procrastinate a lot. You live in procrastination. You know, I'm just praying and fasting and waiting for the future like that. None of them prayed and fasted. But what happened with them? Breakthrough. Breakthrough. Limitations were broken. Limitations were broken. I pray that this message, you will implement it in your daily life. Amen. Amen. I'm a woman of prayer, man of prayer. I'm a woman of action. Ah, Ella, if you want to see action, go to Ella. <laughs> I'll come and act. <laughs> I'll never pray about act, and the action will be more than this. You will pray that you will revive this. I'm telling you, that's the secret to break limits. I'm not saying don't pray. But your actions is needed as much as your prayer is needed. By faith, God created the world. Works were done. Just open your mouth and begin to pray in the spirit. Begin to declare, tell yourself, say, I'm a limit breaker. I am a limit breaker in my words, my thoughts, my actions, everything that I do as a person. I am a limit breaker. I am a limit Thank you.
Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. You've become a limit breaker. Don't say, I will, be, uh, uh, maybe uh, it will happen later. If you believe you've become now like this, a limit breaker, Amen. just let me, let me just see your hands. Let me just see your hands. Just wave your hands onto the Lord. If you believe you've become a limit breaker, let me just see your hands. You are a limit breaker from today. Let me just see your hands. Glory be to God. Yeah. It is done for you according to your faith in the name of Jesus. Amen. It is Hallelujah. done for you according to your Amen. faith in the name of Jesus. Amen. You Amen. Something Jesus. extraordinary that you've never done before. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Martin, Amen. unmute yourself. If where you are, you can unmute yourself. Martin, unmute yourself. If where you are, you can unmute. How are you? Can you hear me, Martin? We cannot hear you. Mashadarabashuru zikade. Zonde de kibo shakata. All right, I, I still cannot hear you. I don't know why. Maybe just go out and come back in. Just. Augustina, unmute yourself. Mashadarabashuru zikazagado. Mashende de kibo shadazagado. Have you been having abdominal pains? Can you come closer to the phone so we can hear you better? You've been yes, having abdominal. You've been having abdominal pains. Yes, mom. For how long now? Like for three months now. Three months. Yes, mom. And you come for morning prayer every day. You pray and still go back with, with the pain. Limit breakers. You see. You're just this is your limit breaker thing. You just say with your mouth, but on your mind, you're you're still very, very limited. <laughs> oh Shada, how do I know? I just know it. Do you have the pain now? No, not now. Just as see if I want to see my cycle. That's when you occur. <laughs> What is that? Do you have white handkerchief in your house? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> How did I know? <laughs> I'm in your house. I'm in Mount Zion. <laughs> Soak it in water and bring it. Go and soak it. Soak it in water, then squeeze it and bring it. God will not ask me to ask you what you don't have. So if God now says, so you see the five thousand pounds you said that you don't have. I know you've liked. <laughs> because any other thing you have, but money I don't have. All right. Place it on your belly. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for deliverance upon Augustina. Right now, but at the count of three, you feel the power of God come there. One, in the name of Jesus Christ. Two, three, in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive your deliverance now. In the name of Jesus. Deliverance. In the name of Jesus Christ. Deliverance now. Go, you pay. Out of her now. Kaba 
In the name of Jesus. That's our deliverance happening. That's our deliverance happening. In the name of Jesus Christ. Set free. When she's set free, I'll tell you people. I'm observing. All the clots in your belly is dissolving now. All the clots now. In the name of Jesus, all those blood clots. In the name of Jesus, go on the left, out, out. In the name of Jesus Christ, come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Amen. 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 You are delivered in the name of Jesus. Amen. And your deliverance and healing is permanent in the name of Jesus. It is gone. Amen. It is all gone. Amen. Thank you. Amen. 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 The agent in charge of the international passport. And they say it's how much? He says 45,000 naira. Okay. Because I saw 57,000 naira in the room. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bring three people to give you money. Three men. They are all men. I don't need to know who they are, but in the next three weeks, it will happen every week. The first week, the second week, the third week, three people give you money. You receive it in the name of Jesus. They might just be angels, <laughs> but not the kind of angel you are thinking. That one that will appear like that with white. Um, the kind of angel that these people know. I don't know. <laughs> hey, they even say it like that. But the scripture says God walks in clouds of darkness. If you see God in clouds of darkness, you say the devil. In the name of Jesus, three people give you money. They'll sow seed in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God is raising you as an intercessor and a prayer warrior. I know this word prayer warrior is not in the Bible. Like I'm, I'm a prayer warrior. I pray and shout and scream like this. Okay. <laughs> but God is raising you as an intercessor and a prayer warrior. Amen. You will have to intercede for nations, 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 nations. Amen. And all of this happened during this fasting period and the prayers. Amen. Amen. That's when you were birthed into this. God has called you for nations, but to intercede more for nations. Amen. I say pray for Cameroon, pray for these people. I'm joking. You don't know it's your assignment. God is giving me to give to you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. God has called you for nations, and he's going to use you in nations. Amen. Nations. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. What food do you have in your pot right now? Vegetable soup. Is there a goosey there? No more. When did you lastly cook a goosey soup? Like for two weeks now. I know some people are thinking, why is she asking like that? What has it got to do with the prophetic? It's none of your business. Let me do what I'm doing. <laughs> ah. Do you have rats in your house? Yes, I've been noticing one rat. I've been trying to kill the rat. <laughs> 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 
I'm sure you're thinking again, what has what got to do? Can you know these things I know? <laughs> mm. Because that rat has been struggling to contaminate her food. Jesus. That's why I asked about the soup she cooked. And when she cooked, the soup she had now. And the one I, I see is like somebody's using this rat. Jesus Christ. To come and contaminate her food, her soup, the soup especially. Because I see a silver pot. Exactly. Yes, what I showed them because the, you might think Ella is just having the pot, silver pot, we cover like that. It's true, more you can carry the pot and show them the seat because they might think it's something we are just here, yeah. just here to. That's the silver pot with the cover. That's it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I tell oh, you, I'm oh, in your oh, house, oh. you think I'm in, you think I'm in my house. <laughs> Ah, Shakalaba showed us he got it. That's a silver pot. I saw a silver pot like that. Yes, ma'am. All this rat trying to contaminate her food. Jesus Christ. Don't worry about the rat. And the rat is a male rat. Jesus. Do I even know that the rat is a male rat? You know? It's okay, you can put the pot, put the pot away. Okay. We, uh, I'm sending the rat out. It's going. You don't worry about killing me, but it will, the same way it came is the same way it's going now. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. What do you have to do with Lekki? Is it Lekki or is what? Yeah, Lekki, yes. Uh, I went Thursday for all this. You know, I used to join one of the Tama. I do mm -hmm. go for it once in a while. So I went there last Thursday for all the job. Don't worry. Let me just let me put this all over. Oh, come to me. You went there for all the job. Do you want to take charge of that region? Yes, mom. Yes, mom. Why do you want the region? Mom, because that's where you, where you can go for audit and they will appreciate you the more to compare mm -hmm. what you have been doing. And I call the name ex exactly as it is. <laughs> I give that return to you. Amen. 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 Spiritually, I make you the regional delegate of that region. Amen. Amen. I saw you controlling that region. Amen. I don't know if it's region or what, but I saw you controlling it. Amen. Amen. I'm even I can feel the power of God so strong upon me sat here. Amen. May you receive that grace in the name of Jesus Christ. What is royal emancipation? What is that? The kind of words the Holy Spirit will just be giving me some kind of. Please do your please somebody help me start when I bring this words and put there. Okay, emancipation means the fact or process of being set free from legal, social, or political restrictions. It means liberation. Amen. Roya, I saw you doing Roya emancipation. Amen. God to bring liberation, liberty in that region. Amen. It might look stupid to you what I'm saying now, but it's a matter of time. Amen. I don't know this, but I see you taking charge of that region and doing royal emancipation there, liberty, liberation of people there in that locality. Amen. And let me tell you this. Three quarters, you feel like three quarters of your life has been wasted. Exactly, mom. 
Okay. But God says the one quarter that is left is more useful than the three quarters that have been wasted. Why? Because you've invested the one quarter in what was needed. Hallelujah. You don't know what when you come to ministry, it does to you. When I get you to serve under me, it does to you. You just don't know it. That you're saying three quarters is wasted, but God is saying the one quarter that is here is even useful than the three quarters because you've invested it in what was needed. The power of God is so strong in this place. Shut <laughs> I feel the power of God so strong. Something I've not felt like this. I can't really explain, but I don't know what God is doing, but the glory of God is so strong in this place. Father, because God is repositioning you, Augustina. You are the first child, right? Yes, mom. Is the second married? Yes, mom. And the third? Yes, mom. <laughs> I saw the second married, the third married, and you were left. Yes, mom. But I saw God repositioning you. Hallelujah. There's a grace that was upon your life that the second took it from you. I don't know what this is, but I saw her walking in the shoe that it was meant for you. Like Esau and Jacob. I don't understand this, but... And because of that, you've been delayed. Because of that, you were delayed because now she's walking in that shoe. But I don't know if it's because you're like first and you're the burden bearer sometimes. Yeah. But I That's saw God, I saw God repositioning you. Amen. Because there's a crown on your head. Thank you, God. There's a crown on your head. You're bigger than you think you are. Mm. And greater than you think you are. Thank you, Lord. But you just don't know this. That's why the grace on your life is speaking for your siblings than for yourself. Sometimes when you're the curse breaker, that's what it happens. You carry all the burden on your head. Yeah, I can tell you about it. Yeah. I can tell you about it. The bullet I take. <laughs> but people don't know I take on the apple. Even in my family. That's what happens when you're the burden bearer. Yeah. Burden bearer doesn't necessarily mean oh you're the one to give money to somebody. It might just be that spiritually you're the burden bearer. Everything, everything. And it's like your your second because I saw the second with the baby. Yes, yeah, she has four children. I saw a baby. Yes, yeah, that's our thought. The, she's the one that just delivered last right. month. That one delivered baby boy. No, Ooh. baby girl. Oh, baby girl. Oh, then is that one? Because I saw a baby girl. Okay. Okay, baby girl. Oh, no, that is the fifth child. That's our fifth child. Baby girl, three girls. Baby girl. Okay. Shut up. Let me just read this word. I would just be like to speak to my grandma. <laughs> Person. That's fine. Anyways, also. Uh, don't worry, God is increasing your finances. Amen. Amen. When do you want to travel abroad? Next. I want to travel, Mom. Hmm? This year. No, not this year. Before next year, February. Before February the 19th next year. Amen. Hallelujah. February 19 next year before it will happen. Because this was supposed to have happened right back hey. in 2017. Hey. That was when God planned so many things in your life, but positioning was the problem. It will happen and 
between this season as well, I saw you with a wedding dress. Yeah. Celebration. I saw you with a wedding dress. What do you have to do with the month of March? It's my third month. 23rd? 20th. I saw wedding. I saw 23rd wedding, something like that. March. I saw 23rd March. I saw a wedding. Hallelujah. Amen. Happening. But by September this year, there are so many changes that will happen in your life. Amen. Amen. By September this year. Uh, and I saw you having an industry. Amen. A wow. designer industry. Amen. Amen. Like a designer industry, something like that. Amen. Do you know anybody called Moses? Moses. Don't worry, you work with Moses. He's not your husband, but you work with him. Okay, mom. In business. Amen. Amen. She'll be your sister in business. Amen. Moses. And you like to wear blue aguada. God is because some things delayed because of God, but we were not understanding some things. That is why we are now in that season of God, you know, putting doing everything and putting everything in place as it has to be. Amen. To the glory of God. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. It is well with you. Amen. Amen. Everything in your body will begin to function according to the word of God in the name of Jesus. Perfection. Amen. The glory of God. Amen. Never no lack. Amen. Everything about you is blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Stay glued to the word of God. Amen. Stay glued to the word of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. All right. Thank you, Mom. Amen. Thank God. Don't thank me. It's not me talking. It's the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Mom. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. So, thank you, Shiko, Abba, Shada, Zakato. Good evening, Mom. Sorry I 